I can't believe this sleigh keeps breaking down. This time I'm just lucky it happened right outside Chico, California, so I can stop in and see my buddy Tim. Maybe he can go ahead and fix me up and get me back on the road. This happens to be his shop right here. This no no help for my pants. I had to steal Bobby's bike off the sleigh, if you know what I mean. So hopefully I don't wreck this thing before Christmas. Hey Tim, you in here? Ho, ho, ho. Santa. Man, am I lucky I broke down near your shop. What broke down? My sleigh broke down. Oh no. Absolutely. What happened? Did you crash again? No, not this time. <laughs> I think we ran out of Christmas cheer. Oh, we need to find some cheer. You know, I found some right here. As you can see, I loaded up some refreshments, you know, nice. on my way to your shop. Luckily, I was only a half mile away. All right. Where'd uh, you get the bike? Oh, this is little Bobby's bike. Hopefully oh, I no. don't mess it up. I am prone to destroying things, you know? Yeah. So, well. but he hasn't been that good anyway. <laughs> so I think you're the guy that can help. Fix the sleigh? Well, you are the godfather of everything flat fender in Willie's Jeep. Is it, the sleigh a flat fender? The sleigh is not a flat fender, but I think we can put some flat fender parts on it. Oh, yeah. So when we go back out there, I think I know exactly what we need. Okay. But anyway, I've been meaning to come see your shop for a long time because, you know, you're the man. You've been building flat fenders for how long? A uh, long time. Yeah. 35, 40 years? Something like that, yeah. So let me go ahead and put my uh, chariot down uh, and uh, let's have you show, show me around their shop. Sounds good. It's a little cold in here. Uh, maybe I better shut the door. All right. You can lean it up against anything. You getting it there, Santa? There we go. Hey. I need to make sure if she had to go in there. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tim. Well, uh, you know, when I was going to school up here at Chico State, I had heard a rumor that there was a guy out there in the fields building flat fenders, and uh, I ended up with Uncle Mike's flat fender, didn't I? Yes, you did. And uh, while I didn't have any money to have anybody do any work on it, I definitely stopped by here quite a few times for what I would call expert tutelage. You did, yeah. And, uh, you know, not too long after that, maybe six, seven years ago, uh, I started my own business and started building Jeeps uh, basically under your supervision in a sense. Yeah, and more than Jeeps, you're building badass trucks. We're and doing all sorts Chevy of solid axle swaps, everything. But yeah. we, in, in one way or another, I guess you could say that our style came from your style. So. Yeah, but yours is amped up, it's a little more modern. Some people Mine's, could call it plagiarism. Nah. But it's also a form of flattery, right? That's exactly what I see. Absolutely, I hope that's how you feel. Exactly. That's um, how I feel. Well, why don't you show us around the shop? Because what people don't understand is you're still building Jeeps by hand, no CNC plasma cutters, um, no computer programs. No. You're chopping stuff up, you know, with cutoff wheels, you're welding so we stuff got, together. We just got a Makita cutoff saw. Yeah. Old school bench grinder. Mm-hmm. Uh, drill drill press. presses. Uh, the piece de resistance is the badass vice I've had forever. People don't understand how nice a good vice is. You use it you every know. day. The vice is uh, and what, something. What you, brand is this? I don't even know. It doesn't even have a brand. It doesn't even say Wilton or anything, but this is, uh, this been, is where it all happens. Their magic happens here, right? People wander in and they want that vice, yeah. And then the anvil behind it I use all the time. Yeah, nice little press. Yeah. Um, but, I mean... The proof is in the pudding here that anybody can build vehicles at the highest echelon in their garage with their own, you know, mediocre tools and come out with a great product if you do it the right way and you put your mind to it. And take your time. And take your time. Do it right. Yeah. yeah. So I can't help uh, but notice this little flat fender here. CJ3B. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of the 3Bs. There's a whole world out there that loves the high hoods. Yeah, so what they mean by 3B high hood is if you take a look at this line down the side of the Jeep right here, basically this is where the original hood would stop. And they made the hood, what is it, about three inches taller? Yeah, three. Well, three it's or four. actually right here. Look at it in the yeah, body. That's this the is spacer. how simple Jeep was. They just welded a spacer into the cowling, right? And then shortened the window frame. Yes. And Tim, can you tell us why they made the high hood? 
because they changed the engine and the carburetor was higher. Exactly. So now if you ever see a flat fender that has the 3A, that has a little scoop, that's because they put they a put later a new, model, a engine model engine and the carburetor stuck Yeah, so it. let's open the engine on this one because this one's a little different. Yeah, this is a 327 turbo fire. I love the orange paint. I love these emblems on the valve covers. It's, that is amazing. It's very cool. And you got the ram's horn manifold so you can fit the exhaust between the frame rails. Out of Corvette, so it's two and a half inch. Ooh, there's nothing like Corvette parts. That's it. And then you're gonna I do- I think this whole motor came out of a Corvette. Because if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking, does this have fuely heads on it? Uh, well, actually, that, this it, one doesn't. It, has, it doesn't have the double hump, but back in the day, that triangle might have been... Something high performance. Something high performance. Let's go with that. I, that's I'm what gonna I'm going to go gonna, with that. It's a Corvette motor. So, I'm saying it's Corvette. 327 in here. Uh, Griffin radiator. With aluminum. a mechanical fan. Now, I always push mechanical fan, and maybe that's because you. Every Jeep I ever saw you build always had a mechanical fan. The electric, Never overheated. The electric one will die, and when you're on the trail having fun, you don't know your fan quit, and all of a sudden your engine overheats. 30 crack, seconds, you're overheating, you're ruining Cracks ahead, yeah, yeah, something like that. So on this one, uh, I noticed that you notched the firewall to fit the distributor. Set it, yeah. Just so if set you did a back. Ford 289, you wouldn't have to do that. Yeah, but who wants a Ford? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so you notched the firewall, um, and up here I noticed something simple and easy. So. Saginaw power steering up on the frame rail, right? Yep. And then uh, look at that nice two by four front bumper. You know, it seems like I put that on all of our Jeeps too, or we do. Yeah. So yeah. I started building those in the 80s and I haven't changed them since. Nope. Same design, same, yeah. So this, what's the idea of this Jeep? Just a this run is around a, town, ice cream Jeep? It's an ice cream Jeep. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, but on the pipe, this thing's gonna get up and go. Oh, it. We got it running and it had a three speed in it, uh, standard, and so now he, it's got a, he, wants, he wanted an automatic, but okay. it, it got with the program with the three speed. It's gonna Well, let's lay close down the hood and look back here and look at the inside real quick, because these are the kind of vehicles that have inspired me to grow our business uh, in the direction we're growing, because there's so many little details, you know? So, as you, you had to cut the floor to fit the Turbo 350, Yeah, right? and that's just the primary cut. I'm probably gonna make the hole a little bit bigger so a whole floor can come out, so somebody can take the tranny out without having to pull the motor. Yeah. So I'm just whittling away at it, trying to figure out where I wanna put my flange. and Center console, drink holder, obviously, in a great spot. Twin yeah. stick Dana 18. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it's offset rear end. Yeah, and, and we got the slider seats yep and notch out did the notch out so, so fender that, notch on both sides and these are just classic uh best top kind of medium back seats they right. fit the motif of the build perfect and if you wanted to do reclining seats later on the seat will recline because, because of the notch of the, the fender exactly yeah. uh no tilt column on this one just was so it was what was in there that's what came in it yeah. and we're doing mock-up right now and it was so ugly i just painted it so that gotcha <laughs> yeah uh, and then the 3B window is so short, you don't get the factory AC there. You don't get the AC. Yeah, what a bummer. We got uh, some over on the, over there with AC. Yeah, I think maybe we want to go check out the other one. So for the running gear though, this one, something you'd like to do all the time. Nobody has to do 44s and Dana no. 60s and all that, right? We so, did wide track 30 in the front. So this, so you, this, this brakes. CJ wide track 30 and where you mounted the steering box, the pitman arm is out front and perfectly lined up geometry wise. Stock tie rod and stock drag link. Off of a wide track CJ, which is 83 to 86. Yeah. Order, rear, you can order them from Summit. They're you know, supplied by Crown, it's dirt cheap. In the rear end, you went ahead with 40, just the factory offset 44. But two inch wheel two, spacers. To match the wide track 30. So front. if you look down the side, the tires they line are, up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the patina, the classic look, you know, where you're going to go with this is awesome. But we got some other ones over here let's take a look at too. We do. Show me what's inspired me over all these years, Tim. Um, so, the storage. Like, of, not even the Jeeps, like look at this. This, this is kind of a, stuff is gold to the me. The storage of old parts. There's I'm, transfer cases, I mean, transmissions. SM420, Model 18, Model 20, uh, four, that's a T18, isn't it? Uh, 465. Oh, 465. There's even a Scout Dana 300 in there. Those are coveted. Ha, ha. 
That is the ultimate for a flat finner build, okay? Just so you know, you got, so what, tell us. Tell us why so the Scout 300. So it has what we call the Texas pattern that will bolt on to the regular adapter, but it's a Dana 300. And the Texas pattern is what the 18 and 20 have. Stop. And the adapter shafts are only about, or the adapter housings from most four speeds or three speeds are only about three quarters of an inch long, right? If you get the one for the 465. The, the no, but four, like it was a factory three-speed or a yeah, T98 yeah, yeah. or a T18. Exactly. And so like a T98 granny low four-speed and a Scout 300, the shortest package ever. That's what Uncle Lee has. That is what's in Uncle Lee's Jeep. It allows him to have a big lifted flat fender, still have driveline angle. Exactly. Yep. So tons of good parts. I mean, you, you, your eyes can wander. You can find just about anything in here in such a clean shop even. So what um, happens is like this building here, the red Jeep, this is his shelf. Mm -hmm. So this is all his stuff, so it doesn't get mixed up in the shop. I wanted to show you what's going on, the Turbo Fire oh, 327. Man. We, here at 12 Rigs of Christmas, especially with the red color, cherry we bomb are a big flavors. fan of cherry yes, bombs. Yeah. yeah. So, that, uh, that's uh, bringing back the 80s right there. Oh, and they sound great when you let off and they pop. pop, pop oh, pop, yeah. Pop. yeah. So uh, while we're standing here, I noticed we've got a couple engines, and I'm looking at a Dana 60 rear, a Dana 60 front, and uh, uh, looks like a, a Chevy engine. So we talked to George and we, we talked about his flat fender, which used to be yours. And it seems like you have a pattern of building up really nice Jeeps and then selling them and then building another one. And you get stagnant with the same Jeep, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's always good to give it to one of your good friends or sell it to one of your good friends. And George had bought a donor Jeep and he was going to do all this work. And I had all these ideas about changing things on the Jeep I had, and I go, just start from why mine, don't you just take mine and I'll start from scratch. So since then you've built, what, two other Jeeps, right? Yes. And so now you're on to the next one. So right now you're Jeepless. Personally, no, well, this is kind of well, a Jeep. I guess you call that a Jeep, so. So we got Dana 60, high pinion rear, uh, Chevy drop, low pinion. And we're gonna go ahead and narrow the long side on that. So to match the we're rear. gonna have Alan do a full, full floater on this. We're gonna narrow the long side. Yep. Uh, badass motor my brother built. These things scream. Yeah. Um, so Chevy V8 and now 465 Dana 300 uh, donor 43 for the wife's Jeep, which we're rolling on to in a minute. So one last thing before we go see your wife's Jeep is we talked about this uh, electronic fuel injection, computers, all that stuff. You know, it's kind of a pain in the ass, right? We're not, we're not so doing any of it. Your Jeep's uh, they always stand the test of time. You could put it in a container and 50 years later come back and you know clean out some fuel and run them, right? So on your personal Jeep, I know you're up in the air, you're thinking about just doing a carburetor and everything mechanical, right? You know, I've done the throttle body. There's a place in Michigan that sells a kit and the whole wiring harness, ECM and all that, I've done about six or seven of them and they run great. But there's just something about having a car, a big the quadri woo -woo, you know, and, woo -woo. and the quadrijet always smells like fuel. Oh, so yeah. you got the whole. Plus, you could flip your air cleaner lid. Ball wall. Yep, 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 yep. Well, you said something about your wife's Jeep. So this is the putt putt. You call this the putt putt. Yeah. Or the 50 50 bar. If you look at the hood, it's got the orange stripes. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go around the other side here. You stand on that side and you, you tell me what's going on. So. This is, what year is this one? 47. 47. Um, I noticed you already did the fender notch. I had to because I don't fit in them. Yep, but you kept factory looking buckets. We wanted it to look as stock as we could. Yep. And, uh, yeah. And what transmission does this have? The T90. So this has a manual three speed. You got pedals through the floor still. Everything's, no swing everything's pedals. stock, yeah. Yep, twin six, so everything's factory. 31 inch tires. Went into Morris Lake with it, open. Yeah. It just and goes. And this is not a 3A windshield frame, right? Because this is a 2A because it's 47. Yep. So CJ 2A. So the, the most people put 3A windows on 2As, so you could call it what it is. But the 2A windshield frame had this little pipe frame. Square, yeah. And the glass actually swings out, right? Yeah. So it has its own air conditioner. And it's, do you do that very often with this? You, you know, said, in the I, you said do do. You yeah. gotta undo the, there it is, right there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, 2A window, but pretty much bone stock. The rear end is a 44, right? 41. Oh, wait. 
Yeah, it's this, 41. This one has... It's not 25, that's 41. Yeah, 41 rear and then a 25 front. Yes. Uh, but you went ahead and put the 11-inch drum brakes on No, this is all, all stock. All stock? Everything's stock. Well, what's under the hood? Even under the hood stock? Yeah, it's all stock, except for onboard air. But it's not an ARB locker, it's just onboard no, air. No, it's just onboard air to pump like the tires it. out. So, flathead, four-cylinder, um, got a 12-volt conversion, it looks like. Yeah. And uh, look at that old carburetor and everything. I mean, all this stuff just purrs like a kitten, huh? Runs like a sewing machine. Another flat fender. Now, as you can see, the theme is running pretty strong here. Well, I have seen you do some, some frame off, full paint job, full perfect, full clean. This whole rat rod scene and original patina is really taking over, and I kind of like it. We're going back to our roots, right? The one we used to Jeep when you were young, and I was kind of young. Yeah. yeah. Everything was like, what we could put together to go, and usually it was last minute. Oh yeah, or on all, the trail. We, yeah. I like to do a lot of my best work on the trail <laughs> broke down. I remember some of that. Yeah. So tell us about this Jeep. So this is a MP GP, GPW, I don't know which one it is. Still got the... So the those little, are, the, those the are little, the ammo containers, right? Yeah, and the trick with putting a roll bar in is you gotta get enough room so you can get in there. Yep, so you go all the way to this back corner. Yeah, so, and then cut that out, and it's got the original seat oh in it. Oh my gosh, look at that military canvas. So, he yeah. ordered, this is a buddy of mine, he ordered those, he's waiting on these to come, so everything will so match. match. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then you can tell this thing was military, because right here on the floor machine. has the curved, uh, basically the gun turret for yeah, the 50 Yeah, for cal. the 50 caliber machine gun. Can you imagine riding, sitting in that seat with a machine gun above your head and somebody shooting 50 caliber out of it? Yeah. These are his emergency brake. Oh, he got an e-brake. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. I'm going to see if he has. So one thing, if anybody's doing stock flat fenders, you need to put a little bit of this in your gas. Because Lead substitute. Because the engines with today's fuel, they'll just go to crap really fast. So put a little bit of lead substitute in there. Santa takes, takes some supplements every once in a while too, but they put a little lead in my pencil. A little pencil. lead oh, in yeah, your yeah, pencil? Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those That's are That's a whole different video. That's a I whole think. story. Yeah, different story. <laughs> um, so uh, Santa actually learned something today. So in the back of this Jeep, you got your two by four classic rear bumper that you did yes. for it. Yes, yes. But as I was looking underneath here, um, I was trying to figure out what rear end this is, it's a model, and it doesn't look like a 44. It's a model 25, full floater. So even I didn't know that in the early 40s that they put a model 25 in. Yeah. If you take a look over there. So you have hubs. You see the factory full float wheel hub. Well, it's so not. It's a full floating hub. It's a, a axle with an end cap on it. Yeah, it's a flanged axle. Flanged a, a axle. Flanged floater, yeah. as I'd like to call and it. So what it has too is you see these two things right here. Yeah, the two long ones. What are those? So when you take these out, you can loosen up the lock nut. You can screw these in to pull it out. So oh, it's an extractor. Yep. Oh, that. Why don't they do that with the new ones? That's awesome. Maybe it's something WFO could come <laughs> up with. So then, one thing you told me about this, and I don't want to bore everybody more, but. Any military Jeep I've seen like this and this vintage has had a Ford emblem on the back because Ford had the contract first, right? Right. Um, but you said this one is actually titled later on because the military refurbished some? So we think that this is one of those Jeeps that came back from the war and it went, I think, to Toledo, Ohio, and they refurbished the Jeeps because it has a different VIN plate and a later year model it has and it has the 3A window frame. 3A window yeah. and and there were a couple and other And this window little... frame looks like it was with the Jeep for the last, you know, 60 years. Yeah. And this is the still the, you know, the T what is it? A T84 okay. transmission, the little one. The older 3 speed. Yeah. yeah. But we've done cool stuff. It's got an I did it tilt yeah, column. Tilt, and I notice how it's nice and dirty and ugly so that yeah. it looks like it matches the patina. Um, it's got painless wiring harness in it. Um, and then this thing, there's no fancy power plant in this thing either, is there? No, they're all stock. These are the, these are the putt putts. These are the OG putt putts, right? So yeah. here it is, flathead. Uh, look at that. Look at that canvas as your fan shroud. That's it. That's pretty cool. That's how it was when you got it. It's got a, a once again, a 12 volt uh, swap with a regular alternator. Yeah, just but get the GM. Everything else original, a little painless harness tucked in here, hidden. Yeah. Um, so like. You know, this is where it's all come from. It's gone full circle now. Ah, nice little horn. Yeah, Saginaw steering. So, so you, you'd make the steering 
to fit a power steering box. And that's Saginaw manual steering. Right, so if this bumper was moved out like my tube bumper, then a, a power box would bolt right on, but for right now, because the engine doesn't have enough power to run a pump. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So you put the standard on, and, and then it when all... you change the engine out, you put power steering on exactly. it. And you're talking about, like for, for your wife's, you're gonna put that little Chevy 4.3 in there eventually. Right, and then you'll yeah. have the power to run this power yeah. steering pump, yeah. and yeah. This must be for your Jeep, right? Yep, those are frame rails from Throttle Down Customs. You got your bumpers ready to go. Build my bumpers. And, and then I... are you gonna use this cowl right here? Well, it might. I got Jeeps in the boneyard that I'm gonna pick I noticed you have a nice little uh, uh, collector's uh, boneyard out back. I do, yeah. Yeah, And well, you know the shop looks exactly the same as it did, uh, how, when was it when I was coming in here? Uh, 27 years ago? Yeah, um, when were you going to Chico State? Uh, that would be 95 to 2000. It took me five years to learn all that information. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of information to learn. <laughs> there was a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Under your expert tutelage. I I don't think I should be responsible for everything. So you actually use this lathe? I do. So look at that. Belt driven. Uh, I mean, just cool stuff. So, so yeah, it's gravity traction. Yeah. So oh, the, the, the motor, the motor actually it. gives the, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so these are the tools that anybody could pick up in any yard sale from some old has-been washed up old man, you know, and start building stuff in their garage, right? That's it, yeah. Yeah. Got the Miller welder from vintage. And you still do all your welding with this welder. Yeah. What's, and what I'm, number is it? This is a Millermatic 200. 200. Um, and it's old enough that I think people are starting to collect them as antiques. So do you have a plasma cutter? No. You I got, still don't have a plasma cutter. I got a cutter. torch. And uh, A torch and an inch and a half piece of angle iron about three feet long a lot of people don't even know can... how to use a cutting torch anymore that's true yep so cutting torch forget about the plasma cutter you know just yeah. sit down and build badass jeeps all day long yeah well, and if you're good enough you don't have to grind a lot you yeah can cut and well let's i have to grind quite a bit lately though let's talk about the elephant in the room okay and the elephant in the room is this vehicle right here right yes and this is the vehicle that Santa wants to get a ride back to the sleigh in. You know, oh, okay. Obviously. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, but I like a little American muscle. You know I think I mean? we should take this. In fact, it hasn't been running in a while, so maybe we should fire so, it up and... We definitely will warm it up, but you gotta tell me the story. Tell me the Jeep, what is it, what's going on? So I built this for a customer, Pete, and Pete, grew up. Let me see if Santa he, fits in there. Oh, you will. I think the seat will go further back, oh. too. Does that feel good? Woo. That look, you know? There's one problem you here. You might be able to get rid of your sleigh. There is and one just, problem here. Where? So, I've been trying to get a stock console that for the commandos. Yeah. And the guys, they're made of gold. They want too much. So, so I'm gonna have to build something cool. I interrupted you sitting in here. So tell us your make model what it is. Uh, 67, you, did you build this? Yes. Okay. 67 Jeepster convertible. Uh, would you call this a commando or? I think it is a commando convertible. I don't know. Okay. I'm not as well versed on these. Because they did make them with hard tops, but this one was right. a factory convertible. And they even made them with a half cab, so they're little pickups. Yep, and all the, you know, we just did one the other day that we're going to do another video on that had the factory half cab, which yeah. was really cool, like a scrambler. So, convertible, canvas top, everything works good back there. Yeah, here, let's... Uh, let's put it up. Yeah, let people see. This is like they're, a beach rig. They're kind know? of fugly with the top up. But. I mean, it looks a little weird with that. It kind of... You know, yeah, Mr. That's, Toad's wild ride. Yeah, that's why we keep the top down. Yeah. So I built this for a friend. Uh, he was actually started as a customer and then became a really good friend. Look at those armrests. That's yeah. a factory? Uh-huh. And I just, we got to the point, it's, everything's been done. The engine, transmission, wiring. He had me gut the car. So if you look inside here. And this, this was Pete, There's right? nothing in the doll. Oh, yeah. buddy Pete. Yeah. Pete who has passed away, so Pete's not around and anymore. And you're carrying on his torch right now. Yeah, and he asked me not to change the car, so I'm just 
sticking with what he wanted. So not to interrupt you, go there's back. So no, you gutted the doors. There's no windows. There's no nothing. Did there uh, used to be no, a slit right here where the window came yeah, up Yeah, so we capped it. And yeah. so when he grew up, he had a group of guys that he ran around with, and they called each other the unit men. So he wanted the Jeepster to be a unit man Jeepster. Yeah. So we did it. And we did it over the course of a long time, maybe 10 years. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, life changed for him, and he was going to move to another state, Hawaii, and he put the car in storage. So it sat for another 10 years with everything done, and it was supposed to go to paint, and it never went to paint. I'm glad it didn't go to paint. And everybody says that now, so the maybe I won't paint it. The patina looks great, you know, so yeah. what do you got, tilt column here? No. Oh, straight column. It, yeah. Unit men don't use girly tilt columns. No, It was don't. a thing, there was a yeah. theme that he had. Uh, auto meter gauges though, those phantom, are new. Phantom gauges. Yep. Just us. old school switches, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, was that 700 R4? 700 R4. With a low car shifter, yeah, and you know, no amenities in here. This is just straight get it on, right? Just get it on, yeah. So, let's talk about before you open the hood, talk about the front on this thing. So, so the front end, the Jeepster, is actually a CJ grill with wings. They weld, weld these wings and on, they spot right? weld the wings in, yeah. So, I was telling Pete when we were doing this, if we bought a late model CJ7 grill. I can take the wings off, put them on, and then it'll look stock, except we got extra blinkers Cause, now. Because the Jeepster didn't have the blinkers here. Right. Yeah. Just these. Just these. So our plan was blinkers here, headlights, and this was going to be cold air induction. And at one point, you had another red CJ hood, and you tried just to put a CJ7 hood on before you welded before the Before we on welded the wings on. To see what it looked like, right? And it looked kind of weird, but... The, yeah. you know, we got to stick with the Jeepster theme. Yeah. theme. So, what's uh, what do you got going under here? Because this is where it happens. So, Pete bought a motor from Chevy way back when. A ZZ. This is like in the what? In the 90s or early I think 2000s? so. Yeah. And so it's the ZZ3 crate motor from from Chevy. when they first started redoing performance. Yep. And it, it looks like it has a Holley four barrel carburetor on there. Yeah, we went with the 600, so it's yeah. really drivable. Yeah. Um, and then you got power brakes. Yeah, it's a Navajo dual, power brakes. It's dual vacuum, whatever yep. that means. Dual diaphragm. So the pedal is so soft, but yep. it locks the car up. Yep. And so because we did the CJ grill, we were able to buy an aftermarket conversion aluminum radiator. That's just the Chevy 350 V8 CJ radiator bolts right in. It bolts right in. Yeah. And no shroud with a mechanical flex fan, but it keeps cold in the winter. Oh, the summer. never gets hot. Never gets hot. Um, and, and all the wiring is beautiful. You can see this. You must have done a painless harness or something. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and nothing fancy under here, right? I mean, no. it's a carbureted engine. It's got a radiator overflow, a battery, and, and a straight get it done. I noticed you have center dump headers like we always do. Right. Which, you know, following in your footsteps, every <laughs> conversion I've done, at, or we've done at WFO, has center dump and a two into one exhaust. Yeah, I get the ceramic coated so the color stays for a while. And two, now, and a, two and a half inch exhaust all the way to the back. Yeah. And Is it dual exhaust on this one? Yeah, and we tried to do it without the crossover because of the cool sound, but it just sounded weird. So, so you we, put had a to, we had to put a I'm crossover. I'm a fan of single exhaust. You, you know, know two I'm, into one. I'm starting to get that way too. Go two, two and a quarter to two and a half into a three or three and a half. Absolutely. And, yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, anything else you, oh, you know what? We forgot to, to, to uh, oh, yeah. talk about the suspension and the undercarriage. This thing is two wheel drive. It's not a four wheel drive anymore. So here, let's so, close the hood and we'll, we'll. So it started life as. Remember my rules, always latch a hood. Yeah. We started life as Look, a. We didn't do that over there. Oh shit. Oh, bad deal. All right. Oh, so Back this. Up. Get that one. I'll All get this one. All right. Man, safety first. Everybody watching, always safety latch first. the hoods when you look underneath. Whew, that was a close one. You know, we like to say safety third, Tim. Safety third? Yeah. What's first and second? Beer and beer? Hydration. Hydration and yeah. beer? Yeah. So the, they never made a two-wheel drive Jeepster? or uh, I don't know in this not year. Not this vintage, yeah. So this was a V6, Turbo 400, Dana 20, Model 27 front end, Model 30 rear end. Okay, yep. and that's how it came in, right? Mm -hmm. 
Continental package. It had all the, the cool stuff. Continental package. Yeah. Ooh, that big, end. big ugly back bumper. Oh yeah. yeah. So Pete wanted it as light as he could get it, with as much engine without. And how much does this thing weigh? Full tank of gas, right under three thousand pounds. What about with you sitting in it? Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> if Santa was sitting in it, it would be three thousand two hundred and eighty. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Just over an eighth of a ton. So we got. Uh, Postal Jeep front axle. Yeah, so this is what's cool. So it bolts right in. Leaf yeah. Springs front. So that is just literally a tube going across. But with, you have to get CJ knuckles. But you have to get the later model one to get the open CJ knuckles. Because that has the model 30 open knuckles. So that's a later model postal Jeep. So that would be like 75 and newer or 72 and newer. Yep. Okay. But it literally bolts in, sway bar hooks up, steering hooks up. Swell. I put CJ7 springs on it to get a longer spring oh, so it would ride better. The Jeepsters had a crappy front spring. And then do a shackle reversal. Okay. The Jeepster rear springs are super long, so we yeah. left those alone. I didn't even notice. I see yeah, this. Yeah, got Take a shackle. Take a look at that spring hanger. You have a factory CJ front spring hanger, or, or CJ rear, because the, the shackles right. are in the front, welded on there. And then the shackle, does it go through the frame? No, it's on oh, the right bottom. underneath the frame in the rear here. The shackle. And are those stock CJ7 springs? Yes. Okay. And then in the rear, I know we're not going to be able to see it really well. You got tires tucked in here. So if what's, you go, what's this wheel package here? So those are the Ultra 51501s. So there's some, yeah, there's you, some you're cool really wheel. Yeah, you with the data here. Yeah, I don't know what they were. But they emulated the wheels on this year Jeepster that had the spokes like that. Is it that. emulated or emulated? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't is, matter. Is it embiotic fluid or ambiotic fluid? I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah. Is, so it, anyway, is it a pillow or a pillow? Pil a pillow? Pillow or a pillow? I don't know. So the tire fits in inside the wheel well here, so that's not the factory rear end. What rear end's in here? It is the factory. Oh, it is? Well, it's a Dana 44 out of a CJ, which is the same as the Jeep. So what year CJ? This would be like 73 72, or 72 and newer? 72 to 75. Centered flange 44. 44, 30 uh, spline. It would have a Model 20 transfer right. case, 30 spline. So we got wheels. He was able to order the offset he wanted just to get it by the fender. Gotcha. And then we imboarded the springs on the frame. So that's the thing. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see this. Oh, uh, you can kind of see it go back from here. The, if you go from the back. Yeah, so there's the leaf spring and the shackle hanging right down underneath the frame instead of being outside the frame with that big long. Is that a mono leaf on it, didn't it? Uh, yeah, and we got the multi-leaf. So now you have a multi-leaf that's under the frame and it'll handle the horsepower of the motor when you, when you dump right. it. Right. And so we went back and forth. A little forth. Bit later when we actually get on it. We know. went back and forth with having a back seat for his grandkids or putting wheel tubs. So when we did the work, we did uh, preliminary work and moved the springs inboard. So that but you didn't tub it? Didn't tub it. So this is factory fender. Well, we can here. tub it. We can go in about maybe four or five inches. Yeah. And then he was gonna order okay, wheels. With out. the springs moved in, you could tub it and put some big meats on it. And right? then go to WFO and get a narrow Dana, get a Dana 60, 60 and, and just really yeah. let it loose, yep, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at the back of this thing, and I mean it couldn't look more classic. The black plate uh, with these Jeepsters. To clean them up, you got to get rid of the rear bumper, right? So we were always going to do a panel. Like a roll pan? Yeah, right? and just come down a little bit and then just hide the whole back of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, enough talk about this thing. i got to get back to my sleigh and uh, get that bike uh, back in the back and start delivering presents here. We're only a, a couple days from Christmas. So All right. I say uh, I get a freshie and we go uh, get it on with this thing. I want to hear the... Uh, all, all eight cylinders, you know? All right, sounds good to me. All right. Okay. Well, here's the deal, Tim. I gotta get back to the sleigh. We gotta fix that thing. So, oh, 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 oh. Let can, me get- Can you give me get, right back? Let me get, I'll get tools. All right, I got, I got my I tools. I got tools. All right. <laughs> Time to go. First, got my seatbelt on. Gotta get mine on oh, too. Man, I love how this seat just lays back. You built this for us big guys, didn't you? It's a big guy Jeep, yeah. You know, these Jeeps are a little narrow. 
Yeah. I'm just hooking an arm right around it. <laughs> This way? This way. Ah. Uh, somewhere down there. Twelve seconds later. Feels so good. Santa, uh, where's the sleigh anyway? Alright. Where's the sleigh? It's it's up here. Uh, it's up here. I think it's around the corner. Let's go. Check it out. All right. See if you can find it down there. I don't see it. Keep looking. Looks like Santa's got a new sled. Hey! 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 episode of 12 rigs of christmas and all of tim's flat fender and especially his jeepster looks like santa's got a new sleigh until the next one remember 12 percent off on the website merry christmas